Today we design a jig that eliminates nail blowout once and for all. Recently I created a lot of drawers for this cabinet and a few others. As it had to be a quick build I used bread nails and glue. The drawers are made from relatively thin 12mm plywood and I had nail blowout in one of the drawers. You are less likely to have blowout when you hold the nailer perpendicular to the workpiece. But still, at least for me, 1 out of 100 nails creates blowout and you can bet that this is going to be the most visible of all nails. To get rid of that problem, I designed this little part that is basically a fence for my nail gun. It is custom fitted to my nail gun and can be downloaded for free from the Thingiverse website. There is a link to the file in the description. If you are not interested in how I designed the part using OpenSCAD, feel free to skip ahead to the end of the video for a short demonstration. I created this part with OpenSCAD, an open source parametric CAD solution. Before we jump into the actual design, let me explain why I used OpenSCAD instead of Fusion 360. First, Thingiverse allows me to share OpenSCAD files with other users. You can go there, select the thickness of the material you want to use and download your personalized custom model. Second, Fusion is free at the moment, but I don't like to be locked in with a single large corporation. While I use Fusion for some parts, I find it a bit scary that Autodesk could decide to start charging money for the software and with all my eggs in one basket I would not have any alternative rather than paying their bills. Thirdly, you will see that for simple parts OpenSCAD can be as efficient as any other CAD program. And lastly, I think it's fun to put some of my math lessons to good use. With that out of the way, let's jump into the program. I will leave a link to instructions how to download and install OpenSCAD in the description. I measure the plastic cap that came with my nail gun and create a cube of that size in OpenSCAD. We just type cube and the x, y and z size between normal and square brackets in the text editor and the left hand side. We then press the icon with the two arrows to get a preview of our cube. In that cube we need to create a cutout to attach it to the nail gun. For my gun that is 10 times 10 times 2.2 millimeters. We create that cube as before and nothing happens. By putting a hash in front of the new cube we can highlight it. As we can see it sits within the first cube. In order to move the smaller cube in the right place, we put a translate directive before our second cube. After moving the cube in the right place, we tell OpenSCAD to cut the second cube out from the first one with the difference statement. All the shapes that follow the first shape within the curly brackets will be subtracted from the first one. Now would be a good time to create our fence, which needs to be at a different position depending on the thickness of material we are using. At the beginning of the file we create a variable that we call material. The text above is a comment that will be ignored by OpenSCAD but displays to Thingiverse users for the configuration of the item. The nail is placed 2.7 mm from the edge of the standard cap. Our fence has to be placed by half of the material thickness minus this value away from the first cube. We save this value in a second variable. Then we create the third cube just as the two other ones. Instead of a fixed value we use our variable for the positioning. We use the same variable to increase the size of our first cube and move it towards cube 3 so that cube 1 and cube 3 are overlapping. With the union function we can combine those two cubes into one shape. 
The last thing we are missing is the opening for the nailer itself. The opening is at the top a bit wider than at the bottom. Each opening is modeled as an individual cube. We then use the quite powerful hull command to connect them to a single shape. With the exclamation mark at the beginning of the line, we see only the shape in that line and can use that for control purposes. We move this cutout inside of the difference function and our piece is finished. We can export the STL from OpenSCAD and use Cura or any other slicing software to prepare it for the print. If you want to use the jig for different material thicknesses, just change the variable and print a few more pieces. Printing one piece only takes less than half an hour and we can test fit the jig. It replaces the standard plastic cap and makes it easy to drive nails in 12mm plywood. But even in 4mm material we can place nails without any blowout. If you are interested in more woodworking and 3D printing content, please subscribe to my channel.